What is it like to visit Antarctica on a luxury expedition ship? Well, I decided to find out. Through the rough conditions, the icy snow, the Drake Passage, and the polar plunge. All to see penguins, seals, incredible glacier ice, and a piece of history. Come with me to visit the seventh continent, the most remote region on the face of the earth. Come with me to Antarctica. So it's the night before we're supposed to leave for Antarctica and we still haven't packed. Woohoo! Story of our lives. We arrived to Buenos Aires, finally got through immigration, spent one night at the Sofitel Hotel, all the while being guided by Swan Hellenic people. And then it was time for the adventure to really begin. Day one. When you travel with Swan Hellenic, they fly everyone together. So we took off on a beautiful scenic ride from Buenos Aires to Suaya, Argentina, located in Patagonia. However, the flight going there was a little bit bumpy. It started off looking very beautiful until the turbulence started, and to be honest, I never get scared at this kind of thing, but I was a little bit scared. I just kept reminding myself that the pilot probably flies this route all the time, and he knew exactly what he was doing. We finally arrived and collected all of our baggage. The mountains in the distance were absolutely gorgeous. I understand why people come to Patagonia. We made it to you, Isha. Yes, I pronounced Ushuaia wrong. We followed the Swan Hellenic signs and jumped in the buses. We're on the bus now and we're gonna go to the ship. Can't wait. The emotions were running high and everyone was excited as we pulled in through the port, patiently waiting to meet our expedition team who was waiting for us upon arrival. Everyone was very welcoming and I noticed that there were quite a lot of women. This is pretty rare when it comes to expedition teams to Antarctica, so I love to see that. We were welcomed on board with a choice of either champagne or juice. And it was time to receive our key card, which was going to be the room key for the entirety of the trip. We also met Giancarlo, who would be our steward for the duration of our time. Your card here. Did you see the green flash you can come in? This is a D6 level cabin. It is located on the sixth floor, and you can have the beds arranged in either two beds or you can have it arranged in one king bed. There is a seating area, a fireplace, a large television, and a lot of storage space in every single room. We also had a welcome letter and some welcome snacks waiting for us. As you can see, there is also something waiting for us on each of our beds, but I will get into that in a moment. I also love that the TV comes equipped with a bunch of movies, Netflix, etc. Now let's get to our goodies on the bed. So we have a reusable water bottle. That's pretty cool. A huge dry bag that can fit probably all your gear. That's cool. And then... Ta-da! Swan Hellenic jacket that we get to keep. These parkas have two different layers and go for $300, so it's definitely a nice bonus, and it keeps you very, very warm. Take you into the bathroom. I didn't do enough shots of the bathroom, but it's very spacious and the water is super hot. For our first lunch on board, we had a buffet-style lunch. However, this was not the norm. Normally, we would not be doing buffet-style. This is more of a relaxed setting where we'd normally only be served our light lunch. As we sailed away out of Patagonia, I could not believe this beautiful rainbow in the distance. At this point, I knew that there weren't a lot of people around, so I wanted to go take a tour. This is the heated saltwater pool and some outdoor seating areas. Although it's a small ship built for 150 people, we only have 126 on this cruise. But there are a lot of areas that you can explore and places to go. On one hand, having a big ship is good, but on the other hand, you want a smaller ship so you can really get into different areas and do less impact on the environment around you. Okay, 
okay, can you tell that we're extremely excited? Honestly, I don't even want to leave Patagonia at this point. It was so absolutely gorgeous here. And I don't know what I expected of this ship, but this luxury really made me feel comfortable that we were on a brand new and very safe ship ready to set sail. They started passing around a few aperitifs and little light bites. This was supposed to be our welcome party, so we can mix and mingle and meet some of the other people on board. And they had really yummy food. They had all of these different little bites. They had vegetarian options. We began to sail far away from the beautiful Patagonian mountains. I grabbed some tea since everything is included on this trip. All of the alcohol, all of the food, tea, coffee, everything that you can name. But before we left, we were legally mandated to make sure that we could do our life jackets and learn all of the safety briefings. My boats are equipped with water, food down the center. And exit by Obviously, there are various procedures that you need to learn about in order to make sure that you are safe in the event of an emergency. But people were having a good time, playing around, while still listening, of course. Once we finally got this done, it was finally time to set sail officially and have our welcome party. The observation lounge is essentially where we have all of our meetings. Today, we had the welcome party. So I went in here before everyone else, just so I could get a few shots of the area. We went outside to gaze at the beautiful landscapes of Patagonia. I was really excited, but the only thing I had to worry about was that we were going on the Drake Passage tomorrow. And if you don't know what that is, essentially, they are the roughest waters in the entire world. So if you get seasick, like me, it's something to be concerned about. Just took a Dramamine because I'm concerned that I'm gonna get sick. Because I'm feeling the boat move a lot. Day two, and our first full day on the Drake Passage. It's the first morning on the Drake Passage and we are struggling a bit. One thing that is amazing about this cabin is that there is so much space to put all of our stuff. However, I had not yet learned where I put all of my stuff, so I was searching through all of the cabinets trying to find my boots. I bet you they're going to say that this is not even bad. Waves are not too bad. When I now look back at this, I feel like the waves already do look pretty bad, but they were only going to get worse. We were given our schedule for the day, and we were blue groups. So that meant that first, we were to exchange our parka if we needed to, and second, it was time to try on our muck boots. These boots are incredibly heavy duty, and they're for your entire duration of the trip to rent. The next stage was to go and get all of our gear checked to make sure that we had nothing attached to our clothing that could possibly hurt the Antarctic continent. <laughs> So I'm not wearing full gear right now, I'm just wearing my heated jacket, gloves, because I'm feeling cold, and we're not even there yet. As I sat there and gazed out upon the waves, I was just hoping that once I put on all my other gear, I would not feel this cold, especially since I was not even seeing any signs of the ice yet. All I could do was watch the waves and see them go up and down on the Drake Passage. It was a little bit unnerving. Day three, our second morning on the Drake Passage. We're not doing so well today. Yesterday, she threw up a few times, but we need to get out of our room. I think it's pretty, it's pretty rocky in here. And this is not even considered bad. Oh. But we had to get to our first briefing. It wasn't that there was a lot for them to tell us, but we had to know our information for the next day. Um, and if the weather looks like it's okay and the locations are okay for kayaking. I realize now that because we took the Dramamine the night before, we were exhausted today, so we could not even keep our eyes open. We didn't even realize that we were wearing sunglasses inside, but we desperately needed them. Feeling a little bit better. We did take some medication. It was definitely needed to get out. Got some food in our stomachs. Some tea. Can't wait to dock tomorrow. We see the first iceberg in the distance. Oh god. Now, as exciting as it was to see this iceberg, I desperately had to go inside in order to watch from there because it was quite cold outside. And I never realized how incredibly beautiful and grand ice can be, but wow, it got us excited. This is pretty much all of the gear that I would wear in one day. 
I had a hat, a neck gaiter, one pair of undergloves, and then another pair of outer gloves. Long underwear made from merino wool for both the top and the bottom. Sunglasses. I personally used polarized Oakleys. And like I said, I had two layers of gloves, but I also had two layers of socks. And of course, waterproof pants for the outside. I personally had a lot of this stuff already, but I know that some people do have to buy it before they come. This is also the parka that they gave me. It has two layers. And then this is an eye hood jacket. It is self-heating and has a battery pack in it. All in all, I felt that I needed everything that I brought on this trip. We did actually make it to dinner and this is what I originally ordered. Everything is made to order, but if you take a look at the waves that were outside here, I was not feeling too well. I really do not know how these people were just chilling and looking out the window. But this is what I ended up drinking. Lots of soup. Day four, finally getting to Antarctica. Unfortunately, the first group that went out had to be called back because the winds were too high so we don't get to go out, but they all got super wet, so it's probably better. You can see Antarctica in the distance. It was a bummer that we weren't able to go out even though the first group had gone out, but while they were out, we were able to see whales and that was amazing. Night rolled around and the conditions were better, so it was time for us to go out at night. This is not super common and that's what's so cool about Swan Helena. They're ready for anything. So naturally, I got my hand warmers ready. <laughs> so excited we headed to base camp as you can see i am hardcore rushing because i'm super excited and i wanted to be one of the first boats out however i rushed a little bit too much and i almost injured myself on the door of my locker i never did this again oh my god this is my chair. this is the room where we get ready and we line up every time you leave the boat you have to scan your id card so they can keep track of you of course then you jump into the zodiac and you're on the water in antarctica there is nothing that can describe the first feeling of getting into Antarctica and just seeing the glaciers up close. Everything was just absolutely beautiful. One thing about Swan Hellenic is that the beds are so comfortable. The sheets are amazing and the pillows are so soft. Day five, let's go to the Antarctic continent. This is an expedition and we've had some absolutely terrible weather over the last few days. We've had to turn back, we've been caught in a blizzard, but today the weather is looking pretty good and I'm super excited to get on this island. We got all dressed and ready to go out. Ready? Let's go! Yeah, can't wait. Because we are incredibly early in the season, it is more common that we're not able to set foot on land as often as we'd like to, but I was very excited that we were getting a glimpse of the penguins this time. <laughs> have questions about what kind of camera gear to bring to Antarctica. I personally always shoot with a Sony a7 III. Normally my everyday shooting lens is actually a 12 to 24 millimeter and that's because I love to get landscapes in as well as myself in a lot of the photos. But for this trip I basically used a lens that is similar to what I would use on a safari. So here I am using a G Master Sony 75 to 300 millimeter lens. Just to give you an idea these are some of the shots that I got on this day with this particular lens. Now just to give you an idea this is what we looked like before and this is what we looked like after we came back so you can see how fast things change especially during the season in antarctica but hey we got back on board we got our hot tea it was time to have a snack and then get ready for the next expedition later in the day weather's looking good finally it is not snowing anymore those are good conditions. I'm being extra positive because I really wanted to go out. Now we've arrived to Port Lockroy and this is where they have the most southern post office in the entire world and you can actually send mail from the post office so i think we're going to send ourselves a postcard and receive it later so we can have that antarctica stay. typically they actually have a store on port lockroy but because of a risk of avian flu this year they are not having that operational so they came on our ship and we got to purchase them it was six dollars for one postcard and one stamp we went to our room to write the postcard and we were told that it would arrive anywhere between three weeks to three years so we still have not received it and no idea when we'll get it. honestly that is the least of my concerns because i just wanted to get out there the conditions were looking very good before anything we were offered the opportunity to get this stamp in our passport before doing this be careful 
careful because it could be considered a fake stamp. Certain countries might deny you at their borders. So we put it in our old passport. I looked at the stamp and I have not done a stamp like this in a very long time. So I apologize for my odd behavior doing it, but I can't wait to receive this from the Penguin Post Office, which I'm going to show you in a second when we mail it. We're back on the Zodiac and finally getting off onto land at Port Lockroy. Our first stop here was not just to see the penguins, but to actually see the old cabin. We have to wipe our boots and make sure that we don't get anything from the elements inside because it's very old and we're trying to protect it. Port Lockroy has two different areas on it. This is the old hut that people used to live in. Now it has been turned into a museum and it is also known as the Penguin Post Office. Some of these cans still exist from the 1950s when people lived here. You can see these pinups, they were actually painted over at some point and then uncovered again in the 1980s. They even had a makeshift Monopoly board here. The Red Hut, which I will show you in a second, is actually where a small team will work from Port Lockroy every year. Just mailed our postcard. See you in a few months. Now let's get back to the penguins, shall we? Dilara and I each had a lot of fun posing with the penguins. Dilara even brought her Turkish flag. This being the penguin post office is obviously a high point for anyone visiting Port Lockroy to see these cute little guys. Now this little hut is where the small team that comes every year during the summer months works from. What is crazy about this is that they have no running water and limited facilities, which means they do not have a running shower. That means that there's no showering unless a cruise ship comes. Now let's just take a moment to admire these adorable little penguins doing their thing. They actually call this the Penguin Highway and you have to get out of their way anytime that they want to cross this area. bring any type of flag that you want and one of the other people on the cruise brought this fun Antarctica flag that said November 2023. We have finally put our feet on the Antarctic continent. Continent number seven. Woo! And we have some penguins to welcome us. This was a big moment for everyone. For a lot of people, it was their seventh continent. But all good days come to an end, and it was time to head back down the snowy mountain that they had carved out for us to get down to the Zodiac. When you are in all of this gear, it is a lot more difficult than it actually looks to try and get down. <laughs> so of course, although it's an expedition, we were still having a lot of fun joking around and waiting for our turn to get back in the Zodiac. <laughs> And so I thought that I deserved a glass of wine and to gaze out at the beautiful icebergs until it was time for dinner. Which I had Chilean sea bass and it was amazing. Day six in Antarctica. Why don't we start off the day with a little bit of luxury. We're on service. You might have seen my short with this video attached, but what you didn't see was this announcement while I ate. We have found a nice calm uh, bubble of goodness. We are just uh, south of Cubivore Island uh, and we are ready for Zodiac. Which means I needed to get my ass up and out. So basically we're all split into four groups. There's green, yellow, blue, and red. And only two groups at a time are actually going to go out because there are certain rules when it comes to Antarctica and they want to have less boats on the water, less Zodiacs on the water, to make sure that everybody has space and we give the animals their space. So sometimes we'll go out first and then sometimes we'll go after. So the other groups just went and now we're just patiently waiting our turn to go out on another expedition for the day. So after I scarfed down my breakfast, I actually realized that my group was second. So I just waited about 30 minutes until it was time to be called in order to go out to the continent. But I did not mind just checking out the view and enjoying the beautiful mountains. Before I knew it, we were back out on the water and we were actually looking for whales and seals this time specifically. We definitely spotted a few. 
It was a nice day out and we specifically had one landing this day. I came back and had sushi for dinner as well as some mashed potatoes and shrimp and it was really tasty. Day seven, definitely one of the most eventful days we had in Antarctica. Now, to be honest, if you wake up in Antarctica and you see this outside of your window, it is not the best thing in the world. However, we were told that we were pretty sure that we were still going to be going out today because the winds were not high. The winds are something that they monitor very frequently and that is what really matters when it comes to safety going out on the water in Antarctica. So we stayed inside until it was our turn to be called. I decided to enjoy a plant-based latte with the fire inside and I stayed toasty, just waiting. And just like that, we were out again on the Zodiac, this time in a flurry of snow, seeing incredible glaciers right in front of our faces. But we had bigger plans for today. Today, we were going to hike in Antarctica. I'm not a hiker, and doing a wet landing was pretty intense, which means we actually walked into the water in order to get on the continent and then hike up this stairway that had just been carved out for us by our expedition team. But this is not even the hike. This is literally just the stairway to get up to the place where we were supposed to walk around and hike through the snow. Hate hiking. Look at the little pebble, look. <laughs> Try and impress its mate. So at this point, we were with one of the expedition team, and he was teaching us about how the penguins take a pebble and they bring it to impress their mate. Then they take those pebbles and they make a nest. Unfortunately, the penguins were laying their eggs right there, and the tide is about to wash in, so they're about to lose all of their little eggs. The actual mating season is a little bit later on in the season. So we continued our hiking. So they mark the path that we walk on so that we these conditions are pretty intense and that's because this is the very beginning of the season so it's very snowy normally when people come here there's no snow at all on the ground we sat and we watched the penguins we were told that the penguins were attempting to get to the highest ground possible because this is the hierarchy they're also the warmest the higher up they are Although the conditions were getting a little bit crazy, we kept trucking along on our hike and it was actually so cool because we didn't feel cold at all. interesting to me because although I thought of Antarctica as being an extremely cold place, most of the time it was only between 25 and 32 degrees Fahrenheit that is, so that would be about negative 8 to 0 degrees Celsius. It gets much colder in other parts of Antarctica, but this is the coldest that it would be during the summer season. We headed back to the ship with another amazing excursion in our belt. There is something that makes me feel so alive about going to the Antarctic continent that I never thought I would actually feel before I came here. But now more pressing shit matters. The things that I love about the ship is that they have free laundry for everybody. It's totally included. I've been told that on other ships you have to pay for this, and I just thought that this was a really nice inclusion to be able to do your laundry, especially when things are so cold and wet. You can always just come dry them. Day 8. Today we're doing something absolutely crazy. We just got note that we're supposed to go do the polar plunge and we are so scared for this, right? Oh, well, yes. Really scared. I, I know I'm like regretting my choice to do it, but you have to do it if you come here. As we looked over our balcony, we saw that this guy was already jumping in. This made it look even a little bit more terrifying because an iceberg had literally just hit the side of the boat before he jumped. I'm gonna put my feet in hot water so that I can be as warm as possible and just like heat my body temperature up before we do the polar plunge.
Chloe? Yes. Why am I not doing? <laughs> Why? What are you doing? Getting my feet hot. Why? So I'm warm as possible. Personally, I thought this was an amazing idea. We are in our robes and we are ready for the polar plunge. I'm nervous though. Our group was the last group. So that meant that our group, blue group, headed to the bar. Huh? <laughs> I got you. We were drinking and getting a little bit buzzed because I figured that it would help warm us up. And I don't know if I've mentioned this, but all of the drinks are included and we didn't have to go through the Drake today. So I did not mind drinking a little bit. Now we are signing away our lives in case we die. Signing away our lives in case we die. If you can't tell, those two drinks definitely hit me hard. I'm so nervous. One on my shot. We're about to do the polar plunge. I think the worst part about it was just standing here cold, waiting in our bathrobes where we normally wore all of our gear. Rico went first. And she killed it. When we got up there, we were asked a series of questions, and I thought he was only asking me these questions, but in fact, he had asked everybody these questions. He pointed to the camera, and I totally forgot about the camera, and you'll see why that's a problem in a minute. If you can see this belt around my waist, that was the coldest part, because it was wet from everyone else jumping in. No! You are attached to a rope, so in case you can't swim, they can pull you back up. And it was definitely cold, but I really feel like those alcoholic drinks helped me beforehand. I never said that I was not dramatic. Oh my god. And then it was Dinata's turn. Next, next, next. Oh, it's gold. Woo! Of course, we gotta watch that one more time in slow mo. She came out cold as we all do, but she did a great job. And then it was time for us to get our vodka shot. They specifically offer Grey Goose after the whole incident. And a bunch of us went in the sauna because it was so nice to get super warm and toasty after the whole thing went down. The jacuzzi was filled too. Day nine. It's gonna be an icy one. This will be our last time going out into the Antarctic wilderness. If at the beginning I saw these conditions cutting through the ice with the Zodiac, I may have been a little bit worried. But after this incredibly long journey, I felt pretty safe. Today, we're doing another hike. I can't really see the path anymore. The only snow in the winter we will be in. Never say never. We're thinking of coming back. And maybe bringing some people with us. These people seem so interested. It's... A lot of work getting in all this gear, but it is so rewarding to know that you are in like the most remote place in the entire world. It's so crazy. Even though you come here on like love again, it doesn't even feel like you could be going for us. That's so pretty amazing. <laughs> So the main purpose of our hike today is actually to get to Damoy Hut. This has also since been turned into a museum, but it is actually an old transit facility. It provided shelter for operators and scientists who were traveling to and from Rothera and other British Antarctic sites. This was specifically for when the ice prevented access by sea. They planned to demolish it in 2007, but they saved it and designated it as a historic site under the Antarctic Treaty System. I thought it was really cool because we got to sign a visitor's book and see how they used to live. I also found this hilarious visitor here in the window. They call these Antarctic chickens because if you were to eat any animal, if you were dying out here, I guess these would be the ones that would be most like chicken. Kind of sad, but they were basically pink, which was really cool because they kind of looked like flamingos in a way because of that. They kept knocking on the glass and they were super cute. Outside of Jamoy Hut, we felt this was a perfect time for Dilara to wave her Turkish flag since this is our last time on Antarctic land for this season. <laughs> We did yet another wet landing and this one was pretty intense, but I have to say these muck boots that we were wearing were really good. We were sloshing around in the water and did not feel anything on our bodies and we stayed super warm. This is definitely why it's important to have good gear. 
These little penguins were swimming all around our zodiac, so I was so glad that we had got there before everybody else and were just waiting there, and we were literally so close to the penguins, I couldn't even zoom out if I wanted to. That is how close they were. I could see all the beads of water on their little feathers. This definitely ended up being a cold one, but because I knew that it was our last chance to be looking at this gorgeous ice and really embrace it, I was just ready and I was being very present. And again, the weather began to change even more and it started snowing. And as we went back through these beautiful pieces of ice, it was hard not to just admire and see how absolutely gorgeous Antarctica is. We could see our ship in the distance, the beautiful SH Vega. So we got on board, we got some hot tea, but because it was our last landing, it meant that we were about to go back on the Drake and they had barf bags out everywhere. So apparently we were expecting it to be very crazy. Looking outside, I could see that we were probably in for a bit of a rougher passage back through the Drake than what we had experienced originally. Dinner was amazing tonight though. I had miso eggplant, but they also offered surf and turf and Tarika got that and it looked so yummy. So right now they're taking off the stabilizers because we're about to start going Going through the drake and we are pretty scared because we're already moving a lot they're predicting an average of five meter swells which is like 15 feet waves it's pretty scary the ladder was already sick and you can also hear those creaks of the boat you can't even tell that the cabin is moving but it's moving a lot day 10 surviving the drake round two so it's a pretty rough day at sea but we're having some coffee in our room and a little bit of room service the Drake is much worse on the way back, that's for sure. For us, anyways, it can be either the shake or the lake, and we got like halfway lake, and now we're getting the major shake, so. Honestly, we didn't do much today, but then we were invited to go check out the captain's deck, and of course we wanted to experience that. There was a lot going on here. There were so many different TVs that were giving off different information, and I had absolutely no idea what anything meant, but we were able to ask some questions. <laughs> So right now we are in the captain's deck and basically it's just like all the controls and they have this amazing panoramic view. It's so cool. I spotted this and it showed us going through the Drake Passage. I was also able to sneak over and see where the captain actually stayed. So this is the captain's quarters. I couldn't do too much snooping, but basically he has a couch, he has a desk, his bed is in the other room over there, and then I assume there's a bathroom as well. But like I said, I snuck in, so I didn't want to snoop too much. The weather was getting a lot better, so we decided to go outside and enjoy and take a little bit of a photo together. What's nice about a small ship is you actually make friends, so we knew everybody on the ship by the end. <laughs> Little did I know that we would be having a caviar and champagne party to say goodbye to the crew and everyone on board. They had other little bites as well, of course. Caviar and views of Patagonia. Amazing. Such a vibe. I'm telling you, they really pulled out the stops for all of the food for our last couple days. And then we had the appreciation party. <laughs> Here we welcomed out every single person that worked on the cruise ship. We clapped for them and celebrated them because we had gotten to know everybody super well the entire time and we had all become really good friends. I actually am planning on visiting one of the people and their family in the Philippines next time I get there. I did want to point out that the expedition staff is about 30% women and that is so rare in this industry so I really appreciated that. Day 11. It's never the right time to say goodbye but today is. I can't believe our Antarctic trip is already over. It has been so amazing. I honestly never thought that I would come to Antarctica because it's so cold. I even have had people point out, oh, you've never been to a cold place before. That is true. This is my first one. But because I had all of the gear, I felt super prepared and I can't wait to come back again. I already don't even want to leave. So I was talking to some people who have some pull in this company, Swan Hellenic, and they were saying that I could potentially fill some rooms and I could bring people on as a whole group. And I think that would be super cool. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments or write to me on IG or something, but I think I'm gonna try and make it happen. Now we are in the town of Ushuaia. We have a few hours to kill and then we are going home. This is a cute town that you can explore, but we really didn't have time. We had to get back to the ship. It just started snowing. Ah. And to be honest, since I wasn't wearing my Swan Hellenic jacket, I think it was a good time to get back on the ship. Once we got back on, we did a number of things. We made sure that our luggage had been collected. We got to look at some beautiful views. We also had lunch, of course.
They also gave us our boarding pass for the plane because we all are going to fly from Ushuaia back to Buenos Aires together. It was kind of nice because it meant we didn't have to say goodbye yet. I believe this trip has come to an end. It was so much fun and I already want to go. We're leaving Ushuaia. It was such a good trip. And time for the beautiful scenic ride back. It's hard to say goodbye to those Patagonian mountains. We took one last photo as a group. There are a few people kind of missing here, but it was a really fun ride back altogether, and it was definitely a little less bumpy than the one going. All in all, I can't believe how special and interesting and beautiful this trip was. Now I'm about to get into a Q&A answering all of your questions. Hey, thanks so much for watching my Antarctica video. I loved that I could share that with everybody. Let's get into the Q&A portion. Were you limited in terms of what activities you could do? Like, because you aren't a scientist, you couldn't go to certain areas, etc. I would say generally, yes, probably. But because I was on a passenger cruise, so this is just for fun, there wasn't anything that we felt that we were limited to. We just had a specific itinerary, and that was to go around the Antarctic Peninsula and get to do a lot of fun things. So there are actually so many different types of Antarctic expeditions. You can even fly to the South Pole. I've also seen a lot of YouTubers kind of sensationalize this idea that they're going to Antarctica by themselves or that they snuck down there or something like that. That is actually not possible. Any person that goes to Antarctica, regardless of what you are doing, you are either on a mission, being sponsored by a science organization, or you're there going on a cruise as a passenger. My aunt and uncle were able to go, but I'm not sure exactly what they did. What things can you do? Is it focused on the natural setting? I love this photo. Well, thank you. When you go to Antarctica, specifically on a cruise that I went on for passengers who are just looking to have fun, you are basically just there to see penguins, see seals, go whale watching, go hiking. Sometimes you can even go camping. It's all about just having fun and doing interesting things on the Antarctic continent. There are a lot of different areas that are older, that were once used for whaling or for other historical things or places that scientists still live, and those are places that you can visit when you're on a cruise there. But generally, it is all about seeing the beautiful nature and just exploring the continent and learning different things about it. Okay, I've gotten this a lot. How much did it cost? What expedition did you choose? Who did you go with? So let me get into that first. I went with Swan Hellenic. This is a commercial cruise company for anybody if they just wanna pay and go on the cruise. I specifically went on the Antarctic Peninsula Odyssey cruise and this is 11 days and you meet in Buenos Aires and then you fly all together as a big group down to Ushuaia, which in the video I pronounced Ushuaia, Ushuaia the entire time and I speak Spanish so I'm super embarrassed about that so I'm sorry that I totally pronounced that wrong the entire time. Everybody else was also pronouncing it like that, so I think it just got into my head. Oh well, I'm not gonna make excuses. Once we all flew down to Ushuaia, we then boarded the ship, and then we were on the boat for two days on the Drake Passage until we reached the Antarctic continent. We were there for four days, sailing around to many different areas. After that, we came back two more days on the Drake, one last day on the ship, and then we all flew back together on one plane to Buenos Aires. When it comes to cost, I spoke a little bit about this, that it depends on the season that you're going. So that means that the time of year, the month that you're going. If you want to travel to Antarctica, you can only do that during the summer months. So that means November, December, January, February, March. November and March are the ends and the beginning of the season. So it's going to be the cheapest. Then as you get into January, February, that is the peak season. That's when the penguin chicks are hatching and it's going to be the warmest too. December, you can still sometimes find good deals, but the way that you're gonna find good deals is generally through a travel agent. So if you were to go on Swan Hellenic's page, you would see that the trip that I am going on next year in December starts at $15,000 per person. Okay, that's for two people in a room. But I may have mentioned this and I just wanna be super clear, but I was given this particular trip that I went on for free because I agreed to take a group next year. Wasn't that hard for me to, to agree to that because I get to meet a bunch of cool people from social media, but I also get to go again. So I'm very excited for that. So December 3rd through 13th, 2024, I am taking a group back to Antarctica on the same ship through Swan Helena. And I've been given pricing and that pricing is $8,500 rather than $15,000. So I'm pretty happy with that. I definitely negotiated and really tried to get it down as low as possible because I know that it is a big expense, but it is an amazing journey and it is so special, 
especially when you get to ride in luxury. I think it's really fun to be able to go to the most remote place in the world and not have to struggle at all. If you know me and you know my style of traveling, I like struggling, I like learning about new cultures, but Antarctica is not a place that has native people, which was another question, are there any native people in Antarctica? No, there are not native people in Antarctica, there are only animals. So this is not a place where I felt like I needed to get in touch with the local customs, because there aren't any, it's just animals and ice and rocks. <laughs> So I did not feel that I needed to push myself and do an expedition that was uncomfortable. I was very happy to be in luxury and get to enjoy that down there. This question has a few different aspects to it. What is the food like there? My understanding is no one lives there permanently. True. Are there any exceptions? Having never been there in the past, can you see the effects of climate change or does it really require a comparison? What do they do with their poop? I'd imagine plumbing is difficult there. So I found this extremely interesting because there were some scientists that we got to meet that do stay there for the summer months. So they were there right now and they actually do not have running water. So they collect all of their human waste and these are the scientists that are there and they dump the human waste in a specific area nearby. I found it a little weird that this is not considered bad for the environment. Okay, they do not have a running shower there. So the only time they get to shower is when a ship will come like our ship came. This is on Port Lockroy, where the Penguin Post Office is. They live right next to that. I believe our ship collects all of the waste and things like that and then distributes them when they get back to Argentina. As for noticing climate change, it's not something that unless you're hyper aware and you've been there many times, I think you could even see a difference. For us, it was very snowy. Obviously, I believe that water levels are rising and that temperatures are rising and it's a serious issue. So this is not really something that I can personally speak on because I really don't know. Which brings me to my next point. I did learn a lot of things on this Juan Hellenic cruise because it is an expedition. They do try to teach you a lot about conservation and how their boat is avoiding negatively impacting the environment. There are a lot of things that are done with the ship, such as the type of gas that they use. It's some type of eco marine gas that is supposed to not impact the environment in the same way that many other cruise ships do. Did you see beyond the ice wall? <laughs> I don't know what this is. I think this is a conspiracy thing that people are talking about, that there is some ice wall that they're hiding a bunch of stuff behind. I don't know, I'm not really into conspiracy theories like that. When I made my most recent post announcing this video, somebody asked me, why did you have to specify luxury? Because I called it Antarctica, my 11 day luxury expedition. And for me, that was important because before I went to Antarctica, I thought that every boat that was considered an expedition ship would be rough. I don't know about you, but I have seen videos on the Drake Passage with a little porthole and the waves just rising up and slamming against and it just being so intense and then getting on land and everything seeming really difficult. And that did not sound fun to me, mainly because I don't like the cold. I love roughing it, I told you this. I love to experience new things, but in the snow, that is just not where I'm from. That is not in my blood. So I'm really not into that. So the idea of a luxury expedition, especially when essentially you are always gonna be paying a lot of money for these trips. Why wouldn't I wanna go on a luxury version, but also get to do an expedition? So that is why I defined it as a luxury expedition and why I set luxury, because it is very luxurious. And especially if you are paying thousands of dollars for something, you would want it to be luxurious, right? I personally don't wanna rough it and feel the boat going like this and flying everywhere. And I know somebody that has a friend who broke ribs on the Drake Passage, like that is crazy. But for us, our boat was going a lot and we didn't even see things moving in the room. It was really impressive. So I really think that it being a new ship and it being luxurious really had to do with our overall positive experience. Also, I've been getting a lot of comments like this one saying, how do you afford the endless traveling? I am going to get into this in my next video. I'm really excited to do this whole video of q and I'm going to ask for a bunch of questions and I'm going to answer all the ones from all my old videos that people have left in the comments, but this is my job. That's all I can say. I'm going to get really in depth into it. I'm going to tell you how I do it. So please subscribe if you're not already subscribed and stay tuned for that because I'm about to start working on that next and it'll come out very soon. Next. What is that solution that you clean your boots with and why? And then I actually love the commenter below because they said, I'm not sure what exactly is in the solution, but it's meant to sanitize clean your boots since penguins poop a lot. 
to the point where it's basically impossible to walk near a colony and not step in stuff. That is such a good point. I did not even think about the fact that we're stepping in penguin poop. But in general, we clean our boots before and after we go on the continent just to make sure we're not taking anything with us. I don't know all of the perfect scientist terminology. There are things that are done that I follow blindly because I want to protect the continent and that makes sense to me. Who cares if we clean our boots? Some people actually had issues with this in the comments and I think it's so funny and YouTube cracks me up every time. If you don't know, I am somewhat new to this community. I've been posting only for a couple months on here now. For the most part, I love the community. I have so much fun and I think there's so many engaging and amazing conversations that are had on YouTube, but people are a little bit dramatic to say the least. Are you allowed to go near the penguin? So there are a few specific rules when it comes to wildlife in Antarctica. The first, penguins, you have to stay five meters away from them, 15 feet. So you can't walk that close to them. But if they walk towards you, you just stay put and they can walk as close as they want to you. So that was really cool, especially when we had this thing called the penguin highway and we would be on either side of these cones and the penguins would all be going through and they were so cute and they would like crawl kind of up to us and look at us, so fun. With whales, I think it is 15 meters that you're supposed to stay away from them unless they come up to you, of course. And we had this amazing encounter with a whale, just absolutely beautiful humpback right in front. We saw a lot of other whales as well, but this was the closest encounter that we had. It was really cool. This is less of a question and more of a comment, but scopolamine patches. These are the patches that someone gave me. They are medical patches essentially, and they finally helped us, but there is a crazy side effect. After like a day and a half or two days wearing it, you put it right behind your ear, your vision gets blurry. So you almost feel like for me, I wear contacts, glasses, but I am negative 1.5. So it's not that bad, but it feels like you're almost like negative 0.75 that you can't see. That will only make sense to people who wear glasses or contact, but it's super great. Your vision gets blurry and then even after you take it off, you can max wear them for three days. And if you do that, I'm sure you're blurry for like multiple days, but those patches really help. So I would avoid the Dramamine and try to get scopolamine patches instead because they actually help. Thank you everyone for your comments. I have had so much fun answering them per usual. I loved making the series. I cannot wait to go to Antarctica with hopefully some people from socials at the end of 2024, it feels so far from now. But if you're interested, just write me on IG and drop your email and then I can send your email to the guy that I booked with and you guys can discuss it and get more information. They're offering like a payment plan too, so you can pay monthly, which makes it obviously a lot more affordable. But I feel very privileged to have gone on this trip and I'm really happy that I could share it with all of you. So thanks for watching. And my next video is going to be opening my YouTube plaque. And we're going to do the Q&A, so let me know any questions you have. And I can't wait to get into that video because it's going to be a very personal one. And I've been waiting to open this plaque to do this video. Bye. Thanks for watching.